the Madman. Yo, yo, it's new Festival of Legends cards, and let's begin with DJ Manastorm is in the house. New house in the house. DJ Manastorm, 10 mana, 8, 8, Balakrok. Set the cost of spells in your hand to zero. After you cast one, the others cost one more. Wow. So, a lot of good cards are rotating out, a lot of big spells. But don't worry, there's Arcane Defenders. And there might be more cards. This card is similar to Calicos, with different upside and downside. Unlike Calicos, you don't get to discover a free card. Like Calicos, you do immediately get to play a big spell for zero mana. And upside over Calicos, you get to discount multiple big cards. So the next turn, you're going to be able to play another big spell for one mana, and then another big spell for two mana. And yes, your small spells do increase in cost uh, if they're part of the spell set that got set to zero. Now, as cool as his entrance is, I do think this is more DJ meme. Why not just play Calicus? Now note that Calicus was in the previous core set. Maybe Calicus isn't in the new core set. Or, or maybe you run both DJ Mana Storm and Calicus. That's assuming that we get a big spell for Mage. DJ Mana Storm hints that this is going to be a big Mage set. So I'm looking forward to all the insane spells that you're going to be able to cast with the power of DJ Mana Storm and perhaps Calicos if Calicos is still in core. Demon Hunter. Their theme is emo music. So we'll start with their legendary spell. It's going down swinging. Five mana, give your hero plus two attack and immune this turn. Then attack each enemy minion. This card is just plain area of effect. And it might look like, oh, well, let's just deal two damage to all minions. Is that really that cool? Well, if you press the hero power, it's six mana to deal three damage to all enemy minions. Well, I mean, that's still not good. But... This is all part of the cycle, you see. Eye of Shadow, 2 mana, 2, 3. Your hero has lifesteal, so all of a sudden you could gain an enormous amount of health. Now, if you have a weapon equipped, you're dealing a lot more damage to all enemy minions. If you have Glaive Tar, it's a 4 mana, 4, 2 weapon. Death Rattle, play, draw one card. Play outcast cards while equipped to improve. Well, that's actually a really good weapon, even without the outcast that's how impressive this card is like this is a outcast lover but it's decent enough just by itself a four mana four two weapon that draws a card after you use the last charge that's actually good you got instrument smasher four mana three six whenever your weapon is destroyed equip a random demon hunter weapon that glaive tar that you're gonna attack everything with well it's gonna get re-equipped and then when that gets destroyed, it's going to get re-equipped. I guess the dream combo is you have your Instrument Smasher and Glaive Tar already in play. You play your Eye of Shadow, and then you play Going Down, Swinging, and then... <laughs> you smash your weapon on everyone's head, and then you scream, and then you gain a bunch of health, and you're a control demon hunter. That's kind of weird. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how this Control Demon Hunter deck looks. Uh, still hasn't worked to this day, but maybe today? I mean, the cards all seem to support towards it. And now for the warrior stuff. Now, as a little bit of a note, like if you're surprised by these warrior cards, just remember, warrior goes into this set being the weakest or near the weakest class first we get to see the legendary spell <laughs> a, a little piece for the fire warrior out there y you remember fire warrior that that kind of was a thing with the last set well i mean it doesn't have to be fire warrior i'm just knowing this is a fire spell five mana give all minions in your deck attack and health equal to their cost so big deck buff here it's kind of nice because uh, unlike other cards, such as Lorthramar, which just doubled attack and health, uh, this card, you can have utility cards, 
you know, like a five mana two two, for example, and then suddenly it's a seven seven, which presumably has an awesome battle cry. Only requirement to playing this card is you want to have a deck full of minions, and ideally of minions that like getting buffed. So you thought hand buff was good. How about deck buff? So deck buff is inherently slower than hand buff on the downside, but I guess the idea is you want to deck buff and then draw some cards, perhaps off of that uh, fire spell. Light of the Phoenix! Go ahead and use that fire spell to draw two cards for zero mana. Woo. Interesting direction for Warrior. Are we going to see more hand buff support? Well, let's conclude with an epic cycle. I think this set of cards is going to put Warrior on the grid. Verse Riff. Two mana. Give your hero plus two attack this turn. Gain two armor. Finale. Play your last Riff. So obviously it's a set of cards. And the Riff cards are rather bad stats for the cost. In a incredible amount of power decreep. Let's compare Verse Riff to a card that's been in Hearthstone since the very beginning. Claw. This is a plus one mana on Claw. Almost a decade later, they gave Warrior a card that is worse than a card that was not played since the beginning of Hearthstone. Well, these Riffs better be Amazing. Let's go to the next riff. It's Chorus Riff. Three mana, draw a minion, give it plus two, plus two. Finale, play your last riff. Well, I remember this card. This looks a lot like Alliance Bannerman. They cost the same amount of mana. The Bannerman uh, buffing your hand with plus one, plus one is slightly better than giving one minion plus two, plus two. And you don't get a two, two, unlike Alliance Bannerman. What you do get instead is... You get to play your last riff, assuming you spent all of your mana playing Chorus Riff. Well, it's clear that Verse Riff and Chorus Riff, the reason why they're all so uninspiring is because this last riff is sick. 10 mana, win the game or something. It's Bridge Riff! The epic riff card, the payoff for these riff spells. 6 mana, summon a 3-4 rocker with taunt, and a 4-3 with rush. And finale, play your last riff. Wait, this is the payoff? So that's a six mana seven seven? So in theory, your bridge riff is going to be able to play one of the previous riffs as well, but maybe you want to save Chorus Riff and Verse Riff to play your last riff, which is a Bridge Riff. So maybe Bridge Riff is the one that does not get a finale bonus. Uh, all of these riffs, by the way, play your last riff. The first riff you play, you can't play your last riff, so that whiffs. So presumably you want to play Bridge Riff first and then play Chorus Riff or Verse Riff, at which point, if you play Verse Riff, you do pay two mana for 7-7 seven, seven worth of cards. Uh, plus, you get the uh, claw effect for free. So 2 mana 7-7, seven, seven, you know, I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's pretty good. And all you have to do to set up is first you play the bridge riff, which is a 6 mana 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. I mean, for those of you who like Boulder Fist Ogre, riff, bridge riff should be reasonable. And that is three of the cards for Warrior to make their class super good with Festival of Legends. Rock on, Warrior! Wait a second, those cards kinda sucked, but that's good news. That's good news for you Warrior fans. These cards sucking must mean that the other cards for Warrior, they must be insane. So looking forward to seeing what the next Warrior cards are because we got the trash out of the way first. Nice.